all good. Hey, Tony. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Yourself? Good. It's good to see you. It is. It is. Under the circumstances, but it's always good to see you smile. Yeah, we just have to find these new ways to connect, right? That's it. Got to stay with the times. Yeah. Overcome adapt. Overcome and adapt, baby. Yeah, right. I know. Adapt and survive. That's what I like to remind myself. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm good. To, I'm glad to hear you're doing well, that your family's doing well. We're doing the uh, fine the same as well. Um, what are some of the uh, good things that have come out of this experience for you? You know, that's a good question. And I kind of was pondering on that just today, uh, comparing and contrasting uh, working at home, vice at work. And uh, probably the good things is it kind of challenged me because I'm so used to being in front of the audience, the GMT style, base theater. And so now to incorporate that skill set, virtual, <laughs> and try to make it work uh, the same way I would in front of a crowd and try to captivate it uh, through the, the YouTube video or something like that has been real challenging, but I'm having a good time doing it. What about you? That's good. Yeah, I, um, I actually kind of like working from home. And uh, l let me tell you why. So, okay. you know, I'm a mom. I have three kids. I got like some okay. Legos on the floor back behind me. I'm just trying to... You know, <laughs> not fall and keep keep them covered. Or step on them. <laughs> and yeah, that's true. That that's really a painful experience. We've all been there. Um, I don't know. I have less mom guilt. I feel like um, I don't have the excuse to say I haven't been with my kids. I feel like I have been with them. Um, okay. I I'm really encouraged to think that they might think of this as been a positive experience that they've kind of learned something and grown through throughout it. So. Okay. I do like the, that we've been able to spend more family time together than normal, although it is more than I expected, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, I got a question for you. Uh, I'm what? still going through this. Have your kids, has it resonated with them as far as what's going on? Have you tried to break it down in layman's terms? My son's too like, doo, 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 doo. he doesn't think anything right now. Yeah, I don't think so. I've got one older son that's really into stats. So okay. he sometimes will grab onto the newspaper when I'm not watching and he'll talk about like this many hundred thousand people have the coronavirus uh -huh. and this many hundred people have died. And um, that's a little scary, but you also want to make sure you uh, let them know that they can access information in a way that's more helpful. I know that Fleet and Family put some uh, information on their website for how to talk to your kids about COVID-19 and the coronavirus, which is good, right? Okay. Yeah. So it is. It is. Us. Absolutely. Today was something. That's a good thing. That's a yeah, good thing. So just reach my out son to said, "Hey, I want to buy that house." Mm -hmm. <laughs> my friend Isaiah said, "Hey, I want to go buy my friend's house when all this is over." So, but nevertheless, it's, it's a good time to have some bonding time. We're doing a lot more reading together. I didn't have the guilt trip at all yet, but that's you had. <laughs> that's, just, that's probably the mom in you. Yeah, exactly. It's a mom in me. So we know from our classes that we teach that mindfulness is really important when you're going through times and you're having to lean on some of your um, coping strategies. So how have you implemented, implemented mindfulness into your daily routine? You know, I, honestly, I've probably taken the same routine as far as my mindfulness, but it's been enhanced. I'm doing it more. Oh. Uh, for, for existence, uh, for example, eating. I'm more mindful now eating because sometimes I'm at work, I'm eating at my desk, I'm checking emails, and my mind's all over the place. So now I'm actually sitting down, I'm making breakfast, the, the preparation of it, and sitting down at the table. And so now I've been more mindful eating all two to three meals a day. So that kind of increased. And my son and I, we do our little two-mile walk, kind of a hike, and we do our deep breathing and get to the top of the hill. Uh, and so now I've been doing it more frequent. Uh, and I got my son doing it, my wife is doing it. So answer your question, eating more mindful. And on my hikes, I'm taking time to bring everything in, kind of find that happy medium, non-judgmental, in the present. Uh, and it kind of has, has done wonders for me. What about you? Awesome. Yeah, I've been doing it with the eating too. And then some of my other things like, you know, my daily cup of joe. Sometimes okay. I can have more than I need to because it's a coping uh, mechanism, right? Right. So when I do it, I try not to do other tasks. I just say, hey, this is my time to decompress. But the other thing I've kind of taken comfort in is in my daily walks, I kind of look at the things that still grow and still thrive and are unaffected by this, right? Like plants and oh, trees yeah. and birds. Life still goes on, even though some of us are completely stalled or might be experiencing a lot of pain and discomfort, right? 
That's a good point. Yeah. I'm gonna my my I might walk tomorrow. I'm gonna uh enjoy the ambiance of the plants and nature a little bit more and see how they're growing through all this uh adversity. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a moment together in our in our daily walk, right? All right, there you go. I just have one more question for you. I think it's the most important one. Um yeah. how do you think you'll be different after this is all over? Wow. Uh, I haven't given it much thought. <laughs> uh because how can I say it? Not knowing when it's going to end. Uh, so I thought about it just a tad bit, and, and I think it's it's going to force me in a good way uh, is to kind of be have more of a balance uh, at home and at work. Uh, probably have had me to be more innovative, of uh, coming up with better ideas that I can offer commands and not be so stove pipe uh, in one area of delivery. I haven't thought about it much, but I think it's going to be for the better. I think we're giving that balance at work as well as at home. Nice. So I got to pose that question back to you. <laughs> uh, I hope that when I can move forward and when we all move forward through this, that it'll just bond us more together. Um, I like to see the little areas that people have decided to reach out to people, even though they can't see each other or communicate. Like, has anyone in your neighborhood put those teddy bears in the windows to send a signal of hope? Or the I know it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I have. The signs for our hospital workers. I hope that we continue to do that as time goes on. Um, like my kids, for example, can run out to our porch area and wave to the garbage man every day. Oh. And I love that they've had that connection with someone that we don't know. Um, but I think it, it brightens our day. Every once in a while, he gives them a little pull on the horn, and that's that's nice, nice, all nice. Really happy. So <laughs> I think uh, you know things to come. We'll just see what happens. But um, I think you know, and I know, Fleet and Family is going to be here, and uh, we're really excited to see all of our clients when this is all over. We just will be chomping at the bit, right? That's it. That's I'm excited. Uh, like I said, we're being innovative. We're taking to the next level. Uh, and I'm excited either way it goes. Nice. Well, it was great to see you today, Tony. I know I'll be seeing you again on one of these, but until we can see each other in person, you stay safe, all right? You do the same. Thanks, Tony. Peace.